Well, a new ranking is out, and Idaho sits at the bottom. Gem State teachers are making less money than their counterparts uh, pretty much anywhere. It's just one topic I discuss with Idaho Education News reporter Kevin Richard, and tonight's Making the Grade. Kevin's back. Still lots to talk about when it comes to the legislature. Before we get there, mm -hmm. you wrote an interesting story about teacher pay in Idaho and how good or bad are we doing? Well, we've dropped a notch. This is a study that came out from the National Education Association, and what they did was they compared the, the 50 states and the District of Columbia, and what they found is that Idaho's average teacher salary now ranks number 49 in the nation. We're ahead of only Mississippi and South Dakota, and we actually dropped from 48 to 49. And on top of that, the average teacher pay dropped by about $200 per teacher from 2012-2013 to 2013-2014. Okay, my mouth has dropped open because I didn't realize we could do any worse than we already are. Why? Why did this happen? Well, that's still a little bit of a mystery. Uh, Idaho Education Association folks want to kind of dig into the numbers further. Uh, it's possible that you've had teachers retire and, and they've been sure. replaced maybe by, uh, by starting teachers at, at lower salaries. Uh, it could also be the teachers have left the state uh, to uh, pursue other other jobs in other states where I've left the profession. So it's not really clear why it's happened, but it has happened. And it does obviously uh, provide a backdrop to the debate that's going on over teacher pay at the legislature. And that debate continuing today, the Senate Education Committee deciding to push teacher pay career ladder ahead. What did they decide? Well, they decided unanimously to send this new version of the career ladder bill to the Senate floor. And what we've had in the past week, it's really been kind of a love fest. The new version of the bill is supported by just about every education group in the state, including the IEA, which had opposed the first version. Came out of the House, sailed through fairly easily, only a handful of no votes on the floor. Barring something really unexpected and unforeseen, you would imagine that this one is going to pass the Senate, go to the governor's desk. It's uh, the governor's initiative, so I, I think it's probably going to uh, go into law in the next uh, few days. And that would start with this July, with teachers getting a bump in pay and then it extending over the next five it's years. It's a five-year plan, exactly. Let's move to a different topic. One thing that we reported on on Monday was the school net student data issue. A report came out from the legislature itself saying that this has basically been a huge money pit coming out of former state school superintendent Tom Luna's office to the tune of $60 million, we've lost money, taxpayer money and grant money. What did uh, Sherry Ibarra's office say about this yesterday? Well, Sherry Ibarra staff has been moving away from this project uh, very forcefully and, and very uh, vociferously. Uh, basically, uh, Ibarra's legislative liaison, uh, Tim Quarter, went to the legislature yesterday and said, uh, we're getting out of this, we're going to fix this. But basically, we're not going to fund it to the level that we've funded it in the past. Uh, what you have, SchoolNet is one of any number of systems that school districts can use to try to get teachers up to date student uh, achievement and student progress information. Lots of districts use lots of different systems. SchoolNet has not been used universally, and some districts have had a tough time making it work. So what the state wants to do now is just get out of this uh, trying to do a statewide system, let mm. the districts decide what they want to do. And let the school districts decide on a local level. Basically, yes, which they already kind of are doing. Before I let you go, one more topic I wanted to discuss that you've written about on IdahoEdNews.org. This is a really interesting story coming out of the eastern side of the state about one small school district who says, we're not taking the SBAC test. They said that they have found a better test for them, but this has implications for students all over the state. How is that? Right. It's not just a, a Madison school district issue, although that's where it begins. Madison School District does not want to give its students this SBAC test. This is the Common Core aligned computerized test that uh, is being rolled out statewide this spring. They want to go to a different test. The problem, and this is where it becomes a statewide issue, is uh, the state is required to have 95% of its students take some sort of an end of year assessment. And the assessment of choice for the state is this uh, SBAC test that Madison doesn't want to take. If we drop below this 95% participation number, that could affect federal funding to the schools to the tune of about $10 million. So it is kind of a big deal. Wait and see what happens. You can read much more on IdahoEdNews.org. Kevin, once again, thanks for coming in for Making the Grade. Thank you.